So I thought this video might be interesting for people that have a bunch of unwanted computers sitting around. And what I have here is three Dell Precision T3500 workstations set up. And what I'm going to be using these to do is heat my bedroom. And this is kind of so I can save money and not have to heat my whole house quite as hot to be comfortable. But also, since my bedroom's not very well insulated, it'll kind of keep my bedroom a little warmer too, so I can sleep a little better. And what I have running on these is folding at home, as you can see on the screen right now. And all three of these I have running at max load, so the CPUs are basically running at 100% load. And currently, as you can see, I'm hovering around 500 watts power draw. So Folding at Home is a program that uses your computer processing power to simulate protein dynamics, such as protein folding. And it's a program that people around the globe run to donate processing power for the better understanding of biology. Folding at Home will run on basically any computer, penny and four or newer. I'm not sure what the AMD equivalent of a Pentium 4 would be, but probably like an Athlon 64. And the reason why I'm doing this is the heat, but also the majority of the power that your average computer uses gets turned into heat. So rather than wasting energy using a resistive heater to heat my room, I'm running these computers where I'm still getting about 500 watts of heat, but I'm also benefiting science at no expense to myself. And although it's not impossible, it's pretty uncommon for a desktop computer to catch fire. Uh, if if a, one ever does, it's probably gonna be due to extreme circumstances because there's a lot of safety features that will shut down your average PC before something goes crazy. Obviously, if you're running really terrible hardware, like stuff that's poorly made, your risks are a bit higher, but like with these precisions here, I mean, I've basically been running similar machines in my house and at my office for years on end with no issues. And generally the parts of the PC that get the hottest have thermal limits, so like a CPU is not going to run itself to the point where it's going to like explode and catch on fire. It'll either thermal throttle or it'll just completely shut down the PC if it decides things are too hot. I wouldn't recommend using laptops though just because the batteries in them can have issues if you leave the PC plugged in all the time or you're mishandling them. And laptops really don't put out a meaningful amount of heat anyways, especially nowadays when a lot of these modern i7 processors and laptops are rated for like 15 watts. <laughs> I believe the Xeons in these three, they're not all the same, but um, they're all quad cores. And I believe they're rated for around 100 watts each, give or take. Um, so yeah, I mean that's the bulk of it. These are running a little bit noisier than they will be at home just because this room is well insulated and the heater's running and it's fairly warm in here. It's probably almost, well, I don't know. It probably feels like it's around 80 degrees in here. So at home, I'm gonna probably turn my thermostat down to like 62. I normally have it at 65. And then I'm gonna see if these will be able to keep my bedroom hopefully around like 67. And the reason I'm running three PCs is because I've decided based on some basic Google searches that 500 watts of power should be enough to make the room more comfortable while allowing me to lower the temperature on the thermostat. And you know, the difference between this and a resistive heater is the heat's not going to be as condensed in a fine point like you would have. So a 500 watt heater would not be this big. It'd probably be, oh, I'm trying to think about it. It's 
good size, probably like an eight inch cube. So maybe, you know, from here, the top, about that high on each side. I have a 750 watt heater that's probably about half the size of one of these desktops that I could use. But there you got more of the safety risks, especially since the 500 watt heater I have doesn't have like uh, tip over protection. I think it has rudimentary overheat protection though, but the thing is, I feel more confident in leaving these running all the time versus a resistive heater or a oil-based heater or um, infrared-based heater because with these, they're not getting hot enough where something should be able to combust. Like, there might be an opportunity where something goes nuts in one of these PCs and maybe you get a dead short and a wire blows up. But generally, the overcurrent and um, power short protection on well-built power supplies will cause the PC to immediately turn off. Because even in situations where I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing, like let's say I'm plugging a hard drive into a running machine, if it even thinks or detects the slightest problem, the PC will just bam, immediately kill itself. So, yeah, if you got you know an old desktop PC sitting around and you want a little extra heat in a room, definitely a way to go. It, it will depend on the power of the computer and you know how well insulated and how much heat you want to generate. But in my case, I'm fairly confident that these three PCs will do a pretty good job keeping my bedroom warmer. Worst case scenario, I might whip out another PC, but uh, at that point, it might get a little absurd. I'm still not quite sure where I'm going to put these in my room, but hopefully it'll work out. And plus, like I said, I get the benefit of helping with scientific research at the same time. Granted, it would be nice if crypto mining was still a thing, but um, yeah, that would be the alternative though. If, if you wanted to get a little extra heat in your bedroom without the risk of using like a space heater doing some crypto mining, but I don't think there's really any crypto mining that's worth doing these days, so at least with this, you're benefiting science and not just burning electricity for imaginary money that may or may not be worth something to the next day. <laughs> so, hopefully that's interesting, and I will uh, put a link to Folding at Home in the description, and thanks for watching.